song on the hymn books. Let's stand and sing hymn number 317. There's something about that name. 317. Let us stand as we sing. Open their hearts 
and be receptive to what you're wanting to share with them. And ask you to give you an opportunity to do that. You may even need to make an opportunity. Ask someone to be here. Do something with you or come to your house or whatever. And say, look, I've got the most important thing in the world I want to tell you about this. And I think that, that that's what we need to do. I think we have held our wonderful salvation inside. And we need to be out with it. So, this is a sobering scripture that I'm going to read to you right now. I was reading it you know, several weeks ago, and I went, oh man, I heard it before, but it just kind of hit me. It's in found in Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 7 through 9. Now as for you, son of man, I have appointed you a watchman for the house of Israel, so you will hear a message from my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say to the wicked, O oh, wicked man, you will surely die. And you do not speak to warn the wicked from his way. That wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require from your hands. But if you on your part warn a wicked man to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, he will die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your life. So what's he saying? The blood of the person that we don't share with is on our hands. That's so great. Let us be like, I'm going to play for the poster today, the little song we all sing once in a while, Yes, Lord, Yes. Let, it, let that be our, our prayer. Yes, Lord, Yes, to your will and to your way. Yes, yes Lord, Yes, whatever you say to do, I'll do. Ah, oh, I I can say yes. Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say, yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be, yes, Lord, yes. So may we say, yes, Lord, I will share you. I think all it takes is the prayer and taking that first step. That first step is the hardest, just like when you're saved. Taking that first step is the hardest. But when we do that, he gives us all the rest of it. So let's be witnesses for Jesus. Now today, Lynn's going to share this film is about uh, a couple who are missionaries to the military in Washington, D.C. I was raised in a Christian home, but I gave my parents a really hard time. And so I finally decided to join the military because I wanted to do something hard and actually finish it. And it was actually towards the end of my military service when I gave my life to Christ. And having spent time in the Army, I know uh, that it can be a really spiritually dark place. They're young. They're far from family for the first time. They don't have maybe a lot of good influences. A lot of broken homes, marriages struggling, addiction, a desperate need for the gospel. There's a lot of young Marines here, and they're living in the barracks. When we started this church, we knew that that was an area that God was calling us to reach, to host Marines for a Marine dinner once a month is where it started. To have something like a dinner that they can come to and just be themselves and sit on a couch and eat a warm meal is really impactful for them. More and more guys started coming, and we baptized our first Marine last summer, and then that Marine led to another Marine and another one to the point now now we're every week we're seeing fruit. This church like means business. Uh, they don't they are not okay with you just punching your church card every week. And... <laughs> it was obvious that this was a church that was doing church like the Bible says we should do church. I feel encouraged every time I go to church like I wish every day was Sunday. When people give to Annie Armstrong, it enables churches like ours to reach military members and their families with the gospel. Washington, D.C. is a city with many, many nations. So to have a gospel-centered, healthy church here is reaching not only the people in this city, but cities all across the world. The military is already moving people around, and as they are moved from place to place, they can take the gospel with them. It's exactly what Jesus has called us to do, and God is changing people's lives. about our salvation. Let's turn to him number 624 in responsive reading 624. <clears throat> you 
you all will be reading one of my favorite verses from one of my favorite songs. My favorite hymn is 353, and it's, I know not why God made it known. He did make it known. I was unworthy, and he's going to keep me until that day. And that's 2 Timothy 1, 12. It's one of my favorite verses. So, um, 624. If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. With the heart of your abilities, you in righteousness. And with the mouth, you confess his result in salvation. My lips will shout for joy when I sing praise to you, because you have redeemed me. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavens in Christ.
turn to hymn number 612, Face to Face with Christ my Savior. <laughs>
when he performs a miracle in the life of his disciples and the life of his friends around him. It is the raising of Lazarus from the dead. But I want us to point out a few things in this passage of Scripture. How do we respond when someone dies? A loved one. Let's say a grandmother, a grandfather, sister, brother. How do we respond? We ask the question, why? And if you look at this passage of Scripture and go with me, <coughs> Jesus had been away. He had been in another place. And they sent a messenger to him saying, Lazarus has died. And Jesus continued ministering so that the, by the time he got to Bethany, Lazarus had been dead four days. And uh, when he got there, the sisters beat him out on the road, saying, Lord, if you had been here, that's the why question. Lord, if you'd been here, it'd been different. You could have healed him. You could have made it brand new. Lord, why did you let this happen to us? We asked that question yesterday with Miss Emily. Why? Let me, let me put it in a different way. Why not us? If you go back in this passage of Scripture, and let me see if I can find the verse rather. Jesus is talking to his disciples. And uh, the disciples are saying, Lord, uh, why don't we go on? And he said, well, I I'm tearing, I'm waiting so that you might believe. Believe what? Jesus, Jesus' miracles, if you go back and look at John chapter 2, the miracle wedding at uh, the change of the water to wine at the wedding feast in Canaan, it says in the last verse, these things were done to the glory of God. These were the beginning of miracles. God is displaying himself through his son, Jesus Christ. There is no other hope for our world. That's the reason we ought to thank Jesus every day for his salvation. Amen. But the issue is, are you ready for the inevitable point in your life when your death is going to come? No, don't talk about that, preacher. <coughs> now, I look across this congregation, and I know how old some of you are. I know some, how old some of you are, but you won't admit it. <laughs> but every person in this building has an appointment with death. The Bible says, an appointed unto man once in mind, and after this, the judgment. So therefore, we need to answer the question, what are you going to do with Jesus? That's the, only, that's the only real question you need to answer. And that's the reason I want to go ask you to sing that a little bit more with gusto. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for your salvation so glorious. And folks, we ought to shout that to the heaven. In fact, you should be like every one of us ought to be this way. When we meet someone at Walmart, or someplace else, we ought to say, you know, thank the Lord for this beautiful day. Even when it's raining cats and dogs, thank the Lord. We need the rain. You need to mention God in your conversation with other people. Don't talk politics. I don't like to watch TV because of it. <coughs> but talk Jesus. And so Jesus is saying to his disciples, I've carried my coming that you might believe in me, in my power, in my glory. Because I'm going to do something great. Then he went out to the cemetery. I want you to get a look at this, this whole scene from Lazarus' point of view. Where was Lazarus for those four days? He's in Abraham's bosom. 
I mean, if you go back and read the, the passage in the scripture, I think it's Luke chapter 16, when he's talking about the rich man and Lazarus dying, that, that, that's not the same Lazarus, it's a different Lazarus. But he was in Abraham's bosom. He was having a joyous time in the presence of God Almighty. He's celebrating the fact that he's in the presence of God. And then Jesus walks up to the tomb. He asks some of the helpers, roll the stone away, and he says, Lazarus! Lazarus hears him. Let me ask you a question. Did Lazarus want to come back? I, I don't like these people who go to heaven and come back and tell their story. If I go to heaven, leave me in heaven. I'm better off there than I am here. And that, that's the perspective we need to have. We need to make sure we're ready. I don't know the process that I'll have to go through to get there. But folks... Getting when we are, are there, when we're already in the presence of God, that's the glory that is ours in the Lord Jesus Christ. Carmen uh, was a singer back when my girls were growing up. And he had a song about Lazarus. Lazarus is in Abraham's bosom, and here's Jesus calling. He said, Jesus is calling me. And Lazarus eventually goes back comes back to this life. <clears throat> but what did Jesus say to Mary and Martha in that experience? Mary, basically, Mary and Martha both said, Lord, we know that you have the power. We know that you're the God that has the power to raise people from the dead. But Lord, he stinketh. He's been dead four days. Jesus said to them, Listen, I am the resurrection. I am the power of the resurrection. And he called Lazarus back from a decaying body to a brand new body. Still with age on it, still with the limitations of human life, but he called it back to this life. He resuscitated his life. I don't want a resuscitation. I want a resurrection. Brand new body. In the presence of Almighty God. That's what God wants us to know. And the issue for us today is, do we know that great salvation? Look at verse 25 again with me. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth what? In me, not in some philosophy, not in some other person. How many believe in Jesus? Though he were dead, yet shall he live. Let me, let me make a statement here for you to understand. Without Jesus Christ, you are already dead in your trespasses and sins. So Jesus is saying, even as you walk through this life, if you don't have me, you're already dead. But when you put your faith in me, I will make you alive at that point. How many of you are alive in Jesus? Amen. Amen. How many of you are alive in Jesus? Amen. Amen. You're going to get louder. I start repeating that. But that's what we are in Jesus. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Miss Emily didn't die. She didn't die. She just changed places. And she's somewhere better. And you know, that makes me a little bit envious. I, I, I kind of want to be where she is. Amen? Amen. Amen. But we say, Lord, I'm not ready to check out right now. You better be ready to check out right now. <laughs> but none of us know what's going to happen to us in life. I made this statement to the young people yesterday. Two of these were there yesterday. We think we're invulnerable in life. 
The things that happen to other people don't happen to us. You don't know what God may allow to get your attention. And therefore, we need to be ready each and every moment of life for our checkout time. I don't know what illness Lazarus had. The Bible doesn't tell us. Well, the Bible doesn't really tell us how old Lazarus was. Was he an old man, young man, whatever? I believe he was the oldest child in the family. I think he was older than his sisters. But Martha is the oldest sister because she's the one kind of running things. Go <coughs> back to Luke chapter 10. On another occasion, Luke chapter 10, verses 38 and following. Jesus is passing through Bethany. In fact, whenever Jesus was in this area, Bethany was his kind of headquarters. He stayed at the house of Lazarus and Mary and Martha. This was where he checked in. And, and fellowship with them. And Martha is in the kitchen. How many of you have been in the kitchen this morning? How many of you invited me to lunch? No, I don't. <laughs> but Martha's in the kitchen busy with household duties. And she's a little bit aggravated that Mary is out where Jesus is. <clears throat> and so he, she comes out and she's frustrated and she's stressed out and she says, Lord, tell Mary to get up off her bottom and get in the kitchen and help me. And that's my translation of that. And Jesus looks at Martha and says, Martha, Martha, look at the verse. Thou art careful and troubled about many things. How many of you get troubled and fretful over many things. <coughs> Tell the truth. <laughs> but there are saying some things more important than the many things that we're stressful over. Amen. And Mary understood that. She's at the feet of Jesus. Listening to every word he says. In fact, this same Mary is the one who anointed Jesus' feet but spiked him in another episode. She wanted to be close to her Savior, her Lord. And she wasn't stressed out by the many things of life. And folks, don't, say, don't hear me say don't do the many things of life. But just don't get stressed about it. Because all of these things will pass. And you will wish I had done that instead of that. That you spend some time at Jesus' feet instead of worrying about the little bitty things that stress you out. And Jesus says, basically, that bother me. For one thing is needful. And Mary had chosen the good part. And that shall not be taken away from her. So Mary has learned many things in her experience with Jesus. Back in John chapter 11. Jesus goes to the tomb. And in this passage of Scripture, we read of one verse that's the shortest verse in the Bible. When I was in school, Miss Andy, we used to do this. You, you had your favorite Bible verse. We could talk about the Bible. You quoted Bible verses. <coughs> and we'd have somebody say, well, what was your favorite Bible verse? Everybody, John... 11.35. That was their favorite verse. Jesus wept. Let me ask you, what, what does it mean for Jesus to weep? Now stop and think what he's about to do. He's, I don't think he was weeping for Lazarus because he knows he's fixing to bring Lazarus back from the dead. I think Jesus was weeping for Martha and Mary. 
I think he was weeping for his disciples because they fully hadn't understood who he was yet. Let me ask you a question. Do you know who Jesus is? Is he the glorious Savior each and every day in your life? Then put a smile on that face. Because no matter the problems that you have, Jesus is bigger than your problems. Someone, somebody asked me one time in a theology class, can God create a rock so big that he can't lift it? No. That's one of those trick questions. You know, you walk outside, it's a beautiful sunny day, everything is beginning to bloom out. And behold the creation that God has made. <coughs> God created not only this earth we live on, He created billions of galaxies that have billions of stars in each one of them, and He's named every star. And if God is that concerned about His creation, how much more is He concerned for each and every one of us? Amen. God wants us to understand that He is there for us. He's walking today with Emily's parents. He's walking with us. And He has life glorious for us in all that we do. And we need to give Him praise and honor and glory for that. Mary, Martha said in verse 27, when Jesus had made the statement, I am the resurrection and life, Martha said back to Him, Yes, Lord, I believe that Thou art the Christ. I believe You are the Messiah. That's the word Christ. The Son of God, which came into the world. The Latin, I'm not so sure about the rest of it. Sometimes we, 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 we start moving toward Jesus and we just yet haven't arrived yet fully in His presence. Because He goes on to say that when you shall come in your glory, I know these things will happen. But Jesus said, today, Martha, Today, I'm going to do this in your life. And he walked down to the tomb and called Lazarus out. Now imagine, Lazarus is wrapped in grave clothes. In other words, they took rag, rags, strips of cloth, and wrapped him feet, hands, and arms all together. And imagine Lazarus coming out of that tomb. He hadn't told him to loose him yet. But understand, Lazarus responded to the call of Jesus and began to come out of the tomb. And then he said to the people who were helping, those who had rolled the stone away, loose him and let him go. God is saying, loose us into the world in which we live. We live in a world that is a tomb. For people are not dead and they don't have Jesus Christ. And God says to us who are alive by the grace of God, loose us and put us into the world in which we can tell people about Jesus Christ. That's what God wants us to do. Easter just a few weeks away. We'll have a whole lot more people in church on that Sunday. And I'm glad for that. But folks, let me tell you, every day is an Easter day for a born again child of God. Amen. Because my Lord lives. Amen. He lives. Amen. To give him praise and honor and glory. Yes. Let's bow together. Sweet Lord, I thank you for the victory that is ours in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for this day that we can rejoice in your presence. And Father, I pray that you touch each heart and each life. Father, our hearts are heavy because of our loss of a member. And Father, it seems like the life this year that I've had several funerals. Father, we are living in the last days. You're coming back. I thank you you preparing us for that coming. Help us, Father, be ready for it. 
and to give you honor and praise and glory in all things. Thank you, Lord, for this day. We rejoice in it and give you praise and honor and glory. Sweet name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Miss Sandy's going to come and lead us to the hymn of invitation. 413. What does God want you to do today? That's what you need to do. Amen. By the number 413, let's stand together and sing together.